This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. I want to talk about two things related to the Supreme Court. Well, one, one overarching uh, element, hypocrisy. What is good for you, what is good for you, is not good for us, says the Supreme Court. They make rulings and pronouncements from on high about how corporate America and the rest of us should live our lives relative to, to the legal issues, the constitutional issues, and yet they don't hold themselves to the same standard relative to ethics and a myriad of other issues. And this one hits home for me. Two things, two headlines on the same day, unrelated, both related to the Supreme Court, Listen, how many? T- if you've watched me for any amount of time, you know that I get death threats. I-, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know, but I wouldn't say more than anyone else doing the job that I do. But certainly, a lot. Certainly, any death threat, threat to the safety of my physical security and that of my family, is too many. Even one, and there are many that I receive. I've done voicemails about, or I've played voicemails on the show. You just search through the history of my videos. You'll see them. So when the Supreme Court ruled yesterday, I'll put up this headline first. Uh, Supreme Court says a conviction for online threats violated the First Amendment. Prosecutors must show that a person responsible for threats understood the threatening nature of that speech, justices say. That headline juxtaposed against this one from The Intercept and Ken Klippenstein, Ken Klippenstein, um, after overturning Roe v. Wade, SCOTUS treats itself to sprawling security detail. After the Dobbs decision leaked, the Supreme Court more than doubled its protective detail despite no evidence of a heightened threat. So for people like me, people like you, in this new Donald Trump's America, where it's absolutely acceptable by these monsters to send vile, threatening, violent threats via email and social media, uh, the court, they say that's okay, that's protected speech, unless you can prove the person totally, completely understood what they were doing, yet they will pony up tens of millions of dollars and hundreds of bodies to protect them from the threats that come. And they're really not even threats. It's people just protesting outside their homes, but they feel unsafe while leaving me and my family completely exposed and unsafe. Where do I begin? Which article should I begin with? Let's begin with the ruling from yesterday. The Supreme Court on Tuesday reversed the conviction of a man who made extensive online threats to a stranger saying free speech protections require prosecutors to prove the stalker was aware of the threatening nature of his communications. In a 7-2 ruling, here is the problem also, is we have an elite group of individuals on the Supreme Court, even the liberals who are ruling this way offering protections for themselves and not for the rest of us. In a 7-2 ruling with Justice Elena Kagan writing for the majority, the court emphasized that true threats of violence are not protected by the First Amendment, but to guard against a chilling effect on non-threatening speech, the majority said, states must prove that a criminal defendant has acted recklessly, meaning that he disregarded a substantial risk that his communications would be viewed as threatening violence. Justice Sonia Sotomayor, joined in part by Justice Neil Gorsuch, agreed with the outcome but expressed concern about the risk of cracking down on speech that is unintentionally threatening. She worried that the ruling could lead, for instance, to a high school student going to prison for sending another student violent music lyrics. And then here is the biggest bummer of my day, that I am in agreement with Justice Clarence Thomas and Amy Coney Barrett. 
Justices uh, Clarence Thomas and Amy Coney Barrett dissented from the majority with Barrett writing that the standard set by the court on Thursday gives preferential treatment to a broad range of threatening speech and makes it more difficult for law enforcement to address actual threats. Now, in my case, I'm not certain that this particular aspect of their ruling will apply to me because they are outright threatening my life. I know where you are. I'm coming to get you. All while providing themselves tens of millions of dollars and hundreds of extra bodies to protect them from their decisions that absolutely have very real world impact on the rest of the hundreds of millions of Americans. When people took to protesting outside the homes of Supreme Court justices following the leak of the draft decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, hundreds of federal agents were quietly watching, both in real life and online, for quote-unquote concerning communications. Now, the court has sought to enshrine the new Praetorian Guard indefinitely, according to documents reviewed by The Intercept. The Supreme Court sought millions for security last year, enlisting the U.S. Marshals to provide personal details for the justices. A year later, that security force hasn't seen a significant increase in threats or attacks, according to documents reviewed by The Intercept. But the Supreme Court is asking to continue and in some cases even augment the high level of security. Uh, Again, for a little bit of context here, last summer, hundreds gathered outside the homes of the conservative justices to protest the Dobbs decision, which effectively eliminated reproductive rights for millions. Top Republicans quickly cast the demonstrations as illegal, arguing that they were tantamount to an attempt to influence a judge, which is a crime. Now, this is what is rich, just gross and hypocritical, is Republicans are the ones who are threatening me. Republicans are the ones using vile and sinister threatening language. It's Republicans who are incited by other Republicans to be the MAGA bomber, to go on shooting sprees, to to attack synagogues. They're incited by conservatives and now protected by conservatives. The Supreme Court has continued to beef up security in response to perceived threats to justices from abortion activists anyway. In the past year, the court expanded its security detail to include 400 U.S. Marshals through the new SCOTUS Special Security Officer Program, more than doubling the number of officers assigned to the security of the justices and their residences. The Marshals' annual report to Congress, released in April, sheds light on their response to the protests, which include 24-hour online threat security uh, screening coverage Excuse me for the SCOTUS all justices and their residences, as well as real-time online research into suspected threats at justices' homes. Although a year has passed since the Supreme Court overturned Roe on June 24th, the marshals this year requested an additional $21 million for 46 new positions, including 42 more marshals to bolster security to judges in the next fiscal year. All kinds of care and concern is being mustered for a Supreme Court that is under no new threat. Yet people like me and people like you are left unprotected. This is the problem we have with the elites in this country. The Supreme Court, even the liberal members of the Supreme Court, ruled terribly on this. Oh, it's 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 a risk we must take to allow people to threaten the lives of others because someone might have their political speech taken away. It's not at risk. We are clear, reasonable individuals who can make decisions based on the context of the speech. Where's my tens of millions of dollars for a security detail? I had one caller just the other day, some idiot said, I'm sure you got all kinds of guards around you. Trust me, much to my dismay, I do not. But you know who does? The United States Supreme Court. They make decisions that impact your life. 
And then they run and hide behind their security after having stripped away constitutional rights from millions and millions and millions of women. Fired up? Yes. Yes, I am. This is gross. What do you think? Am I overreacting? I'm sure many of you think I am. 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I'd love to hear from you. Um, <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Follow me on social media. You can tell me how wrong I am there. I am at Dollamore on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you appreciate what I do, you think I, I provide value to you, please consider supporting my work and producing my work. Click the join button below. Become a channel member for two bucks a month. Click the super thanks button below or go over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. I love you guys. I appreciate you very much. I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Don't send me death threats. <laughs> and take care of one another.